Ready whenever you're all right, welcome back to another instant kind of reaction uh, pod to the news that dropped last night. Uh, Sacred Heart offensive lineman J.D. Dorenzo, who's a St. Joe's Hamilton uh, product. Uh, he's got one year of eligibility left. He's a guy we've mentioned a couple times on this pod, but he committed to Rutgers last night. Huge commitment for the program. Richie, how did this all come together? Um, honestly, I was a little shocked last night. I didn't think it was going to come together this quickly, but we knew he was going he had to enroll, um, in the next week or so. So this, this kind of makes sense based on the timeline. Um, obviously, like you said before, not the instant pod that most people want it, but a little busy last night. Like, you know, give me a break. I, I, I get yeah, a Saturday little... night. I was too, I wanted to, but it just wasn't happening. I know well, people, people got to understand, like we have other lives too, you know, but, yep. uh, yeah, no, uh, Rutgers offered, and uh, I want to say Ruck Rutgers offered a little bit later than most schools. I think uh, Utah up here had 20 something total offers. I think Rutgers was probably in the teens somewhere. Yeah, we, we were probably right in the middle. Um, we offered him a, a couple days after he got his first. And everything's so condensed in the transfer portal that a couple days could mean you, you don't have a chance. You know what I mean? I mean, the kid's already committed somewhere. <laughs> exactly. It's insane. Most of these kids kind of like, are, I hate to say it, they already know where they're going. Weird, right? Mm, a different story. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, um, Rutgers offered. Um, I know Aldrich and Gleason did their homework. They watched a lot of tape on him, checked him out. Um, he, he seems like a very solid prospect. And anytime you beat out schools like Purdue, Kentucky, Oklahoma, Michigan State, it's, it's a big win at the end of the day. I know the portal yeah. overrates Feynman a little bit, ten, tends to a little bit. But he's a one-year kid. He's a starting left tackle, um, two-time or one-time first-team All-American last year, three-time All-Conference kid. Like he's and he's a mauler. If you watch his tape, it's like, holy shit, this is you don't see this very often from from Rutgers guys. He's got some I, nastiness in his game that nobody on the offensive line has. Yeah, on, our, I mean, on Rutgers anyway. I haven't seen that nastiness since Zach Vineski, and I thought he could have been so good if he just had a little bit more size to him. And that's what you want in your offensive line. You got, we want guys up front that are mean and are going to literally punch the other dude in the chest and push them backward. Um, but he, he has good hand placement. It looks like, yeah. The only thing I know we talked about off the off camera was um, I, I concerned a little bit about his bend, but that's something that's very teachable. It's not really that. I mean, it is a big deal, I guess, but it's not like it's <laughs> to teach something like that. Like when you guys have, uh, have guys like Aldrich who are developing offensive linemen over the past few years that have developed pretty well actually if you look at yeah. Arch's or that Rutgers alone it's like yeah the offensive line isn't good but he's made it look like serviceable with two defensive linemen a preferred walk-on and it's two like, two true freshmen this year yeah and it's it like played significant at time if he could do all this it's like all right well then maybe like if you get him some dogs down there in the trenches like like a DiRenzo it's like Let's see what he can do because now, now you have your starting left tackle for next year. Now yeah. that's where – are you you gone? My bad. No, I mean, I think Dorenzo not only is going to be great for next year, like he's a guy who had to come from like nothing basically. Like he went to St. Joe's, which is a pretty good like high school for, for football recruiting. But he, he was lightly recruited and he worked his ass off and became what he is. He's He plays with a mean streak. He's a guy that's going to be able to show these guys not only how to work – in terms of the weight room, like getting in early, that kind of stuff, but also like playing through the whistle, like he's going to be able to demonstrate, like, this is what it takes to get to this level. And we have 17 offensive linemen who are either freshman or sophomore eligibilities on, on scholarship. So these guys need a guy to look up to and know what to do. So he's going to be huge for this program moving forward. Yeah. It's from a mentorship role. Definitely. Um, you mentioned 17. I, I wouldn't be shocked if that number went up before spring starts just because we know how it works with Shiano. He did you get a couple defensive alignment and it's like all right they're not working out yeah flip them real quick see what happens look at Ireland Brown look at Troy Rainey I I projected these guys I actually thought Ireland Brown was pretty decent at, at defensive tackle yeah but you're, when he dudes there that's like all right flip him try to see if he's good over there and he's been pretty pretty solid in year one of his uh development I mean what he switched in September and then was, it was starting in season I believe yeah, it was like September, wait, mid September, early October, and then all of a sudden, like two weeks in, he's starting left guard, and it's like, holy shit! Like, oops, yeah, what's... and it goes back to the <laughs> thing, which is like developing some of these guys like pretty quickly too. But um, D Renzo's huge. It, it allows Rutgers to move O'Neill to in, an interior guard spot, whether that be left guard or right guard. I'd assume left guard just because he's familiar with the left side of the line already. Yep. Uh, I think he's gonna actually thrive there. I think we've seen O'Neill at his peak almost as, as in terms of the left tackle and and he's solid he's serviceable but i think at guard 
he has NFL potential at guard. So we'll see what happens there. He, he's a guy who has just massive size. So now you're moving your arguably your biggest lineman to the interior. You have Zelenskis, who's a little on the smaller side. You have D. Renzo. You have Holland Pierce. And then Reggie Sutton, if healthy enough, you won't probably see him until May. You might not even see him early September just because that, that knee injury was or leg injury was pretty bad. But um, if you look at the size of this line going into this season compared to last season or even a year before when Shiano first got here, it's, it's improving dramatically. Yeah, for sure. It's night and day. And I think a lot of people, this has been a, a, a sore subject for some people on the board of taking one year guys and how it doesn't really help you, but you can destroy a guy's confidence if he just goes out there and gets like pummeled. Like look at what happened to Art Sikowski his freshman year. Like he was probably a guy who could have developed into a good quarterback, but taking that many hits, not mm -hmm. like having such a terrible experience, like that is mentally daunting to come back from and that was my concern is that that would might happen to gavin next year where he's just like under fire under duress constantly he's making quick decisions that aren't really there because he, he doesn't want to get hit again like so this is why it's it's huge just to let guys have that like period to it develop like both as the quarterback and offensive line because you, you throw an offensive line who's not ready out there it's going to be just as bad as mentally yeah. as it could be for a quarterback yeah, I know uh, going back to that, I know if people have talked about Art Sikowski on the boards and how people always thought he was an NFL guy. And I'm not going to lie, you see him in practice, you see his fundamentals. It's like, holy shit, this kid has NFL like talent. Like, and then I'm, yep. I don't know what the hell happened. He got crushed. I remember talking to Ash the first year he got there in spring or in the summer after he got there in spring. He's like, three years and gone. I'm like, you're nuts. You are yeah. nuts. <laughs> like, three years and gone. Mark it down. NFL bound. I'm like, you're. You're insane, dude. I don't know if you know who you have up front because you don't have nope. anybody. But then you saw him against Ohio State, gets crushed, and there goes the confidence for arguably the rest of his career. I mean, he's starting to build it back up, but he's in, what, year three, year four now? At least. At least, At yeah. Least. Yeah, it's it's hard to build that back. But, um, yeah, this was priority number one going into the offseason. They needed a lineman badly. I didn't think it'd be a left tackle. I actually thought it'd be a guard which made more sense to me because just O'Neal was serviceable. It's like, you're probably not going to get the top tier, the top tier guy. Tackles are um, insanely like valued insanely high oh, yeah. right now. And he was going to keep getting offers too. The longer he was in the portal, he the last offer he got was Oklahoma. That was only going to be more SEC offers, more top blue blood yeah. programs. Like this is a kid who could have played anywhere and he chose to come to Rutgers. Yeah, no, it's, it's huge. Going back to like uh, talking about how he committed and everything. I know he had, Zoom calls with Virginia Rutgers and Oklahoma over the past 24 to 36, we'll say around there on that timeline, maybe 48 hours. So like he was like down to those three and it sounded like Virginia like made a heavy, heavy push and to beat out guys like Tony Elliott, even though he's a new coach, they always have that type of juice on the recruiting trail right away. And then Brett Venables down at Oklahoma who was really badly on him. And um, at the end of the day, it's, yeah, maybe it's not the same Oklahoma because not Lincoln Riley. It's still Oklahoma. Sure. Like, <clears throat> yep. They're cleaning and up it, on the in the portal this year. They got they yeah. flipped Dylan Gabriel. Like they're getting tons of dudes. Wild. I don't know how you enroll in it. Like, eh, nope, I'm out. <laughs> but yeah, but, check bounced or something. But, I don't know. Yeah, that's a weird one. <laughs> but, uh, besides the point, uh, yeah, big win. South Jersey guy again. Yeah, uh, you got to give credit a little bit to Fran Brown just because he has these South Jersey connections. Um, I know Keyshawn Griffin talked to him a little bit. They played together. I want to say one or two years. I forget what it was. Yeah. Um. But yeah, big, huge job by Aldrich here. And like, I know a lot of people have questioned him over the past two seasons. But again, look at the line he's worked with. Um, look at some of the guys he's recruited. Like he was one of, arguably the main recruiter for most of these linemen, not all of the incoming ones. And he's he's building this line. This is the guy from Princeton that people are like, what the hell are we doing hiring an Ivy League coach? <clears throat> he's, he's done pretty damn well. So, I mean, got to give credit where credit's due. And then... Um, yeah, this is just a huge get by Rutgers, and it doesn't sound like they're done yet either. Yeah, and, and although he did come from Princeton, he was a guy who worked for Shiano twice. Like, he worked in Tampa Bay, and he also worked as GA at Rutgers. So it wasn't like Shiano was taking a total risk. He knew what he was getting. Like, he's a good coach. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't bring a guy to Tampa with you in the NFL unless you're kind of confident in him. Yep. But, but that leads me back to um, – I started looking at his Tampa staff. It's possible maybe one of these guys comes on as the 10th assistant. Who knows? Really? That's, a, that's interesting. We don't want to speculate too much, but uh, just, I guess, be aware of what could be coming there, guys. 
So what does this mean for the rest of the portal? Are we going to go after a second lineman? Are we, how many, are we still got kind of on the same plan, maybe a tight end, linebacker, wide receiver? Um, for the most part, it's kind of the same plan, but we, we um, well, obviously you saw Ryan Patty's post recently on the board. Um, Willie yep. Tyler, SMU and Rutgers. Originally, it sounded like he was SMU bound. Like I would have said like 70-30 SMU bound, but now it's leaning more towards like a 50-50. Like he's really still interested in Rutgers, but the thing that makes me curious a little bit is that where do you put him? And he has yep. two years. I guess you can kind of mold him for a year, but do you really want to waste a year of eligibility and then go start at your final year? Probably not, but I, I don't know. I, I still tend to think this one ends up with SMU. He's a big Texas guy. He played at Texas. Um, he's transferred like three different times at this point. Yeah, that was, he's had a very circuitous route in college. That it's kind of alarming. He started at yep. Juco, then he went to Texas and then he yeah. went to, uh, I think he's, he actually, <laughs> I don't know if he enrolled at Syracuse, but he committed to Syracuse and didn't mm -hmm. make it there. He was only there for like a week, and then he went to ULM. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a very weird path that he's taken. Um, again, at the end of the day, I don't see him going to Rutgers. It's, it's tough to say that because every, it's, it's so, everything changes like within 10 minutes. Like I could get a text in two minutes. I'll be like, oh, yeah, he's going to Rutgers. <laughs> oh, okay, an yep. idiot. I'm gonna just ignore that. But um, yeah, it, it's ever changing recruiting, especially with the portals. But um, he's one to watch out for. I know um, I talked to someone down in the Texas area in regards to Carlos Dunlap, the Minnesota transfer, massive yep. Minnesota. Um, he's a little bit more intriguing because he was supposed to go to Texas and it sounded like he was ready to enroll and everything. And then Texas kind of just basically said, we don't got room for you, buddy. Like, sorry, like we, we found someone Real. else. And it's, it's the way of the portal. Like it's, it, it, like you said, it's like two days, either you're in or you're out done, like figure it out. So um, he's, he's a little bit different. He's an interior guard, but he's got the size of a tackle. So I don't know how you really pull a guy like him. Like that's my biggest concern when it comes to playing him. Um, he's had his yep. struggles in Minnesota after his injury, before his injury, he looked good. Um, after his injury, he slowed down a little bit. He lost a little bit of that speed. Not that like, Six foot six, three hundred something pound guy has much speed to begin with, but yep. losing any speed definitely hurts. But uh, yeah, it sounds like Rutgers is kind of revisiting that one, and it sounds like they're more than open to taking a Dunlap and a Tyler, or maybe two more linemen. Like in general, it really? doesn't have to be. For now so they could take up to two more transfer linemen, and add in a tight end that they're pushing in. Still on it, still an Anno, still an Anno. I don't know how to pronounce shit. He actually um, got another offer today from uh, JMU. Not a big offer, but interesting. You reported another. Um, I, I that's down the Rutgers in Syracuse with that one. Uh, he's gonna visit both apparently this month. I don't know when. And he wants to decide by the end of this month, end of January. But he's not a guy you have to worry about too much because he's not enrolling till summer. So he has it to graduate. Sucks. It really it, sucks to not get him for the spring. Yeah, it does hurt. But um, I, I don't know if you posted or someone on the boards posted it. They know a guy up um from Lafayette and they hyped him up quite a bit. They thought he was like a really, really good player. Like, so, I mean, they need tight end help regardless. Um, I'd be shocked if that tight end room is going to be the same as it is in spring, as it looks in, as it looks in spring, as it will be in fall. I really think the one guy's going to transfer out. You guys can speculate on that one as much as you want. I think it's kind of obvious, but I have no uh, idea. yeah. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know if uh, that's going to open up a scholarship. And then in terms of the two offensive linemen, you just said there's 17 freshman eligibility offensive linemen. Freshmen or sophomores, yeah. Yeah, I can't see a way that they don't lose. There's going to be attrition there. They're going to lose at least. Not, I shouldn't say lose. I could see like four, as many as five guys maybe transferring out before uh, before summer. Probably after spring, you kind of see where you, you fall on the depth chart, like, like most springs. And then you'll see just a massive exodus of transfers, whether that be O line, I could see D line, I could see um, probably not linebacker. They're all young. I could even see a DB leaving. I don't know who, like off the top of my head. I'm just I'm just speculating here. But the biggest things I could see is a wide, maybe a wide receiver. Even there's there's a lot of wide receivers. There's a lot of linemen. I know when Piano yeah. came in, it's kind of crazy because they were wasting like not I should say wasting, but wasting like 18 scholarships on receivers and it's like and none of them were good i know and now it's I like they have, I think 12 to 15 offensive linemen in general on scholarship when shiano came now they're at 17 freshmen or sophomore eligibility linemen and it's yep. just it's 
big turnover and it's far from over. There's still a bunch of guys that like, I hate to say it, aren't going to see the field anytime soon at Rutgers. So they're going to have to, going to have to do something and step it up and, or get out. Yeah. I don't think you're wrong. I think there's, if you just take a look at your scholarship charts that you guys post, there's some very, very obvious names where you're like, who is that? And if you have to ever say like, who is that? Or I've never heard you guys talk about him on the board. That probably means he's not very good. And that's well, a shame to say that. Hold on, because we didn't know who John Perry was until the other day. That's true. But he, I mean, he's a coach. He's not a player. Yeah. You, you expect but, to hear players' names. Yeah, so I know a lot of people speculate that they need a quarterback coach. Number one, it's not happening. Number two, I did hear that Perry did help out a lot with the quarterbacks, for what it's worth. Okay. So, so that's like, um, for example, I could see them hiring. I know everyone wants a QB coach and a sexy name hire. I hate to say it. I don't think you're going to get that as the 10th coach. Um, but they could hire an analyst guy that could do, do just deal with coaching. Now, I know people are like, oh, it's a perfect situation. You're getting a kid like Gavin Lynch that. Why would you not want to come here? It's such a tough sell at the end of the day still. It's still a Rutgers offense that hasn't been good since, I don't know, 2012, 11, maybe. Yeah, yeah. the so last it, time they were really good was probably when Carew was here. The fridge so, year, I would think. Yeah, like 2014, 2015-ish yeah. at latest. So, it is hard to do that on a kid, especially an up and coming coach who's like, it's it's a high risk, high reward situation for him. The yep. Rutgers are no risk because it's not a, on the field position, but um, I could see Gleason bringing in like a former quarterback that he knows or something on the staff, or whether one of the other guys knows a former quarterback that'd be interested. But I do, they will get a guy, I would assume, if they don't even have one already in mind or even on staff because they're not going to announce something like a random offensive analyst unless it's a big name which i don't see happening but uh that 10 spot's gonna be interesting i don't know really where they're gonna go with it but there's so many options like i said in the last pod yeah it'll be interesting to keep track of i know that that coaching clinic's wrapping up today so there might be news coming out of that who knows i mean a lot of movement happens there like a coach that's pretty desirable might have you know left his previous school and now is available so you never really know one last thing though did uh do you think we're done at wide receiver now that we've had a couple days after Sean Ryan committed, that that's an interesting one. Um, I know the big name that you that you always want is that uh, I love Austin, man. Yeah, at an Army, he's um. I can't believe he put up 400 yards in an Army offense. That's wild. Oh, <laughs> but um, yeah, it doesn't sound like they're kicking the tires too much. They're showing interest a little bit, but they have from what I know, they haven't offered yet or anything like that. Um, I do expect him to get some Power Five offers. He does look good oh, on yeah. tape. Jersey kid, modern day prep guy. Um, I'm not too sure they're going to add another receiver, especially that's like the six foot three guy because they kind of just added on Ryan. So it's like maybe one another, but they do want speed and they want as much speed as possible. But Alston does have it a little bit. So it's like uh, I haven't heard much on him. Like I said, um, I don't really expect them to add another wide receiver, especially if you're going to go after two, maybe th- three total linemen in the portal and then the yeah. linebacker we want add in a tight end then it gets a little funky and it's like this numbers are these numbers are very tricky but then obviously shiano math is shiano math and two plus two equals fish and it's shiano will make it work if if he if he finds a player who's good and wants to be here he's not going to turn him down guys he's going to take that player yeah, if he likes him he's going to find a way oh if he has to he'll go kick someone out real quick <laughs> oh yeah yeah yep. um, i didn't like that greg if you're watching i'm sorry <laughs> But uh, yeah, yeah, we're just kidding. Yeah, he'll, he'll make room somewhere. He'll find a way. He'll figure it out. It's not a big deal. But yeah, for sure. All right, guys, it's been another edition of our instant reaction podcast series. Uh, I know some people have said they really like these, so uh, we'll keep doing them. And hopefully we get a couple days between the, the next pod we put out. But yeah, it seems I mean, like the way things have gone. Why not? Yeah, it's always like rockers in the end. It's like, all right, shit, here we are again. Oh, it's going to happen in 15 minutes, I'm sure. Yeah, it happens every pod. Every <laughs> one so far. It's just like, boom, boom, boom. It's like, God damn it, Mike. Give me a yep. break. Yep. All right, I'm going to go All watch right. the NFL games. I'm gonna go, I think my Giants are losing.